This is the Tony Katz Show. There's going to be questions, of course, of innocence and guilt and what, what, what kind of case we're going to be able to establish. I'm not interested in that conversation for now. I am going to the Muslim question. Everybody calm down. Breathe. We're grown-ups, and we're going to have a grown-up conversation. Because this is how it has to happen. Let me go to the question that I need to go to. There's an article from The Atlantic, a left-leaning, if you will, leaning. The Boston bombers were Muslims, it says. This is the headline. The Boston bombers were Muslim. So, question mark. And the, the tagline there, the, the underneath, was that the secondary headline? What do you call that? Secondary headline? Why we turn to labels in times of crisis and why we should stop. At that moment, if you had an actual physical copy of the Atlantic that had, the artic- that, that, that had this article in it, you should set it ablaze. I could not, in good conscience, tell you to take your computer and throw it against the wall. Because there's probably other good things that you can see on your computer, like porn. Or the Tony Katz Show uh, on FM News Talk 97.1, talkcom or YouTube.com slash Tony Katz TV. Why we turn to labels in times of crisis and why we should stop. Are we doing that? Are we people turning to labels? Or... Is it that they, what they say, is it what they say so we don't talk about what's in front of us? Are we now? Here is the question. I said I go to the Muslim question and I bring it to you. Not the way you thought I would. People wanted to get so angry so quick. And I told you, take a breath. Are we now at a point where we can discuss the obvious connection between radical Islam and indiscriminate or purposeful attacks. You take a look at the words of the Chechen president, who says that these two kids turned out to be so awful because they grew up in America, and it's the American culture that led to them and this bombing. And I say to you that that is a wonderful and glorious lie. The American culture leads to marathon runners running an extra mile to give blood, and it leads to soldiers and first responders who run towards blasts. They run into the fire. They didn't know if another bomb was going to go off. They ran towards those who need help. American culture did not lead to Bali or Mumbai or London or Madrid. American culture did not lead to 9-11. It did not lead to the murder of Leon Klinghoffer on the Achille Lauro or to Daniel Pearl, beheaded just a few years ago. Beheaded! They keep telling us, you hear it over and over again, you heard them say, we've been telling you, if you see something, say something. The circular, the circular logic, it, 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 is, it, is a, it is a mind scramble. How is it that we are supposed to say something if we're not allowed to say anything? Listen to this article. The first line, before we get into the meat of the article, why we turn to labels in times of crisis and why we should stop. How in the world can you have that and then in the same breath say, see something, say something? I'm not allowed to say it according to you, according to what is now the mainstream media, according to the progressive elite, according to the political correctness. Because if I say something, I'm rushing to label. I am not, however, rushing anything. I can see. I can see what's happening. I can take a look. If I'm unable to open my mouth and notice, if I'm unable to open my mouth, And say clearly that a lot of bombings and murders are perpetrated by Muslims. How in the world am I supposed to see something say something? How does that work? How does that come together? Not 
all Muslims are bombers and murderers. Of course not. And they have a very, very tough road ahead of them. They're the ones who have to have a much larger and much louder voice. And it's going to take them time. It could take 10 years. It could take 20 years. They have to start saying this is not who we are. Stop it. Put an end to it. But until that happens and until they stop it and put an end to it, I have to take a look at what's going on around me. I have to be able to ask the question, what is it that is happening? What is it that these men are being taught? What is the value system that is put into play? I'm seeing something. I'm saying something. Why shouldn't I? This isn't about labels. This article from The Atlantic is written by Megan Garber. Why we turn to labels in times of crisis and why we should stop. This is not a label. This is who they are. And I believe who they are has some kind of teaching that brings them to this moment. I want to know what it is. I want to be able to openly engage that conversation without speculation. I do not want to be told that somehow I am a racist. I am awful. I am shameful. I am disgusting. I am hideous. I am labeling. I am profiling because I see something and want to say something. They don't give me this mic, ladies and gentlemen, because I say nothing. I don't have Twitter and Facebook so I can take photos of what I had for lunch. Although sometimes I do because every now and then the food is spectacular. I, I want to cover this again. It's impossible to see something, say something. If you tell me that what I say makes me a racist, it, it can't be done. Jared Lee Loeffner and Adam Lanza and, and uh, Holmes, all the mental illness. Should I not talk about mental illness? Because if I don't talk about mental illness, I become Piers Morgan. That's what you get. That's the kind of, 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 of crap. You get when you don't talk about the issue at hand because you're afraid or ashamed of language or the truth. You see, what, what, what we have is that we don't want to talk about Muslims because then we're somehow racist. Then we're somehow insensitive. And we don't want to be. It's, it's, it's better it's better to not notice than to be called insensitive, not in the real world, in their world. And fighting their world is extremely important. You got to be able, you have to fight a world that says, see something, say something. But if you say it wrong, you're a racist. If you say it wrong, we vilify you. If you say it wrong, we try and get you fired. See something, say something. And it, it, it should be followed up with, go on, we dare you. That's what it should be, Kane. See something, say something, if you got the stones. That did make me laugh out loud. That's what they mean. My conversation is to when do we get to have the conversation that those, we, when we see these bombings, a preponderance of what we're seeing worldwide has an association with Islam, radical Islam. That is not to say that all Muslims are bombers or terrorists or dangerous. That's nonsense. But we shouldn't notice. I see something. How many times, Holly Bacon? You've been with me a long time, Bacon. Uh-huh. How many times have I said, I have two eyes, two ears, and a lump of gray matter in between? Many, many times. Many, many times. And you know what I do with those eyes, those ears, and that gray matter? I coalesce the vapors. That's usually the expression that I use. I see it. I listen to it. I understand it. And then it tells me something. If you tell me to see something, say something, and then you call me a racist for saying what I see, what you're telling me is see something, be very, very quiet. That's exactly, oh, you, you are Elmer Fudd. <laughs>